Corruption in Nigeria is a constant phenomenon and with the forthcoming elections approaching, what is the relationship between the political economy of corruption and the elections? Stay with us to find out. The current Naira scarcity occasioned by the currency swap policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria has affected a lot in various aspects of Nigerians and life in the biggest city economy. We wonder about its effect on the health of citizens. We'll talk about this on our second conversation. And we also have a look at uh, the headlines on some of today's national dailies. Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartel. It's a beautiful Monday. And we're glad you're there and watching along with us. Well, I am Messi Bokwa and we're reaching you live right here from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. We hope you had a great weekend. Uh, as we did. Kofi, I guess you had a great yes, weekend. Yes, indeed. Our weekend was fantastic. Um, you know, we had a, a telethon yesterday um, here on Plus TV Africa. Uh, it was uh, never before in the history of uh, television broadcasting. Have it's the I second. Have I seen in Nigeria? No, it's part of the first one. It's still like a so, so I'm just saying it's the second. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so Plus TV Africa is a place to be. I mean, um, we, we have it locked out as far as elections 2023. Uh, is concerned then we're your elections television station all right so please keep it locked here for everything uh, 2023 elections i don't think you should touch that down Messi, how was your weekend great all right Restful. all right <laughs> you, you didn't go to the cinema you seem to somehow find a way to to go find places to go to whilst i'm just at home on weekends so, <laughs> no uh, where did you mean, go to this weekend? very restful for me okay. i had a lot of time resting you had a lot so of time usually resting. if i look it's like clocking in so I would say when, whenever I'm clocking on Friday, I don't get out till, you know, Monday. Messi is, is being charitable, <laughs> with, charitable, charitable with the truth. Messi has a way of finding, finding some fun spots. No, so in, apparently in if I'm clocking on Friday, I just chill till most times. Then I have to go to church. But I, I didn't go to church yesterday. All right. All right. Well, well uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Let's start, <laughs> let's start with the first um, uh, trending story tonight. Of this morning, of course, we would always start with our top trending segment. So we take conversations on social media and what generally has got people talking, chit-chatting, and um, we bring it on here. Uh, I think people may have maybe a title of P-Square versus uh, Shem Kuti, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so let's, let's look at this. It's, it's heart-wrenching. And, of course, uh, the unfortunate death of a 12-year-old student of Christland High School. Uh, yes, indeed, that school is in the news again. I don't people are going to say blah, 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 Christland again, like you say, in this part of the world. But... Um, uh, Whitney Adeniro uh, is a deceased young girl, 12 year old, really sad. I mean, for anyone to lose a child at this age, uh, you know, really sad indeed. Um, she said to have passed away during the school's inter-house uh, sports event on Thursday. Um, indeed, um, the deceased parents have accused the school management of negligence. And uh, the father, Michael Adeniro, and his wife, uh, simply identified as Mrs. Adeniro, took to social media at the weekend to seek uh, public intervention to unravel the circumstances that may uh, have led to the demise, the sudden death of their daughter while she was taking part in the sporting activity or events of the school. Um, they said the event was held at the Agege Stadium in Lagos and that the student who was healthy, hale and hearty. You can see her with the father, but that is not on that day. Um, but she was said to be hale and hearty before leaving home on the said day, uh, was reported dead by the management. But the school management has denied any wrongdoing, saying its officials uh, took appropriate steps to save the deceased when she slumped at the stadium. Uh, this video on social media is shared by Mrs. Adenero, who narrated uh, her, how her daughter prepared for the event on the day and she claimed that uh, the school took the disease to an uh, immunization center instead of a hospital. According to her, uh, from the time her daughter, 12-year-old uh, girl, fell to the moment she was pronounced dead, it took, was about a spout of 10 minutes, what the mother said. So the parents accused the school of negligence, insisting the lack of an ambulance or first aid of first aiders as well at the venue, uh, uh, you know, contributed to her passing on. 
um, it's really sad one indeed the school of course like I said they have to deny any um, you know culpability in all of this mercy so I'm gonna try not to be emotional because I could no, feel free, feel free. No, I Have mean, it's some, not a matter of feel free. It, it, I'm, it I'm is it's an emotional one, you know. No, so uh, I'm not sure you can contain me if I would begin to shed tears here, right here yeah, on national yeah. television. But, it's, it, you know, it's very unfortunate. It's what has happened. And like you have stated in the conversation, you talked about the same school is also in the news. But if you follow the story vividly and all of the comments is made from you know, the father and the mother, like both parents, the school said uh, at some point in their response that, you know, Whitney had stated that she wasn't buoyant in, in the statement, in the statement that was released, that she wasn't buoyant health-wise. So I'm even wondering why the word buoyant would be used in when you want to talk about health issue. So she wasn't buoyant to be part of the sporting activity that was going to happen at Agege Stadium, into house sport, and that was it. And that uh, prior to this time, on, on the 20th of January, uh, the school was, the parents were let her, you know, she wasn't feeling well. Uh, Whitney's father came to pick her from school, so it's possible that she had health issues. But I'm saying that if a child had, ha, I'm, I want you to think about it. If you have a child and your child has health issues, and your child is saying, oh, I don't feel too good. I have tummy ache and whatever it is, I'm feeling feverish. I don't want to go to school. You know, because I understand how this works, right? Because <laughs> I have a niece and I yeah. know how she can be every other time. Uh, she would say to her parents, would you allow your child to go to school that day? Usually it's the, the, you know, what's expected is that you call the school and tell them, my word, my child can come to school today because she, she's not feeling too well. So the response from the school is that Whitney wasn't feeling well prior to this time. I mean, she had complained that uh, she's not feeling well. There's some health concerns, and that's why she can't come. You know, she can't be part of the uh, inter-house board activity. But she showed up. And it was also reported that the mom, you know, was also at the venue. And when all of this happened, whatever happened, uh, the parents also complained that they were not alerted until, you know, everything had happened. She was at the ground, and everything happened. But let's leave it at that because it's suspected that the autopsy should be conducted to ascertain what's responsible for the deaths of this young child, uh, Whitney. And of course, when you find out, then you can tell what exactly uh, it is. But however, speaking generally to the issue, I remember that schools usually set aside some parts of their premises for sporting uh, facilities and recreational grounds for students to enable them, you know, develop uh, physically and mentally. Kofi, I really don't know what your experience schooling primary school, secondary school was like, but the one I attended and what I, I know over time is that, first of all, even the ideology of having to transport children from, you know, the school premise to an external venue for an event has a lot of risk factor. An accident can happen. And these things you don't have control of. You know when an accident is going to happen, it's not like you're being sent a mail. There's no mail, there's no voice call. You don't have any notification from wherever that you're going to have an accident. Accident will happen and that's why it's called an accident. So I want you to begin to ponder. Like I said earlier on, <laughs> I mean if you have to be in school way back, where, what I know, I engage in activities, sporting activities in school. Oh, really? You, yes, I so, did. You know, you don't give and me this kind I played of information. Co coffee? No, no, uh, no it's, you it's okay. You're telling me. However, you're having what, a what did you play? Volleyball. Oh, really? I used to play volleyball. Wow. And I love volleyball. I think this is a simple I should, sport. I should take you to, uh, to um, a volleyball court one of these days. I played yes, volleyball. I haven't forgotten my, my, the my skills. Christmas I haven't break. forgotten how it works. Wow, so you, it, you, I think you, it's you, the simplest sport ever. You can do this. Then, yes, you can do this. Okay, and you can, then, no, you no, can do you're this. Kind of, you know, you're fetching water. No, so you, you do this yeah, you're one. Like you're fetching water. You know you're fetching no, water. like you, you, uh -huh. you do this one. Okay. You do this but one. But anyway, anyway, but you, it's a so my point yeah, is, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. my point is, I'm speaking generally to the yeah, issue. Yeah, we about understand having, that having, you know. Yes, I'm speaking generally to the issue. We understand that uh, there's a call, there's need for us to have an autopsy, autopsy to a certain what could be responsible for the death of the 12 year old, right? I'm not sure anyone wants to be in that position. Just imagine, put yourself in that shoes. You have a child who left your house, very healthy and very okay. The school bus picked her up 
And then, you, you know, sometime before the day ended, you got the report that you, you had lost your child. And you can't categorically, you know, get any concrete explanation to it. I'm just saying, think about it. With all of the excuses that's been given. But my point here is, before this time, Kofi, schools used to have facilities. And the argument for, you know, privatization and the private sector is that the private sector is more efficient than, you know, the public sector. So private schools, public schools, and what have you. It is naturally. I mean, like I said, <laughs> recreational activities you're going to have inter-house sport, it was usually in the school space, whether my nursery school or the primary school. It was within school premises, right? So I, I want you to think about the danger of having to take children away from the school environment. And the fact that, you know, even at that, when you go to a gym, <laughs> really, you are supposed to, because sometimes people get into sporting activities without understanding their medical condition and their state. And that's also not even an excuse. But we can't continue to be complacent. That's what I think it is. We have total disregard. However we look at it, whether it's out of ignorance or you know, it's a deliberate thing, we do not have regard for the lives of people. And the schools, you know, it's like you have a child. You leave your house. Kids get to spend a lot of time in the school. That's another, you know, form where people are supposed to be responsible for these children. I can't say I have my kid allow my child in a school where you pay so much. I'm not sure you want to go through the fees. We're not saying anything here. We're just saying, look at all of this. We can't be careless. You can't even allow things to chance. We have to be, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's out of the fact that we don't really care about how people fare or we're just careless about it or we're more concerned about how much we make. Because these days, whether you're rendering a service or you're selling a product, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the money. So the money is the motivation. And so you don't even care about whatever happens, you know, on the other side. But that's not humanistic. I'm not sure any religion supports this. Whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, Judaism, uh, if I got that correctly, traditionalist, including the Havilist. I'm not sure they support, you know, this kind of attitude that we get to portray every, every other time. But we need to move away because uh, we are out of time. Yeah, before, before, before we go away, uh, uh, just a few, a few words on this. Um, you know, I think it's, it's too early to, to, to say anything definite. You know, I mean, I was, I was coming to work this morning and I had a radio presenter asking, uh, you know, the public on public radio, why are people still taking their children to uh, Christland School? If you remember, there was um, a, a controversy or an incident where um, uh, some students, particular girl, young girl, had um, a, a sex tape, you know, released, a video online circulating, and the same Christland School was involved. Um, you know, immediate reaction, <laughs> immediate reaction, you know, when the mother put out uh, a, a video, just like the mother of this girl, unfortunately, she's passed on, you know, she's not alive. It's a very sad story. Uh, but the mother put out a video, the first girl, that sex tape, you hope you remember that. She put out a video and, uh, of course, the school was blamed for a lot of things and everything, you know, uh, some le teachers were arrested in that school, taken to the police station and, and, and all that, I read before court and all that. But as time went on, you know, the, the narrative, and celebrities came online, social media, to attack the school, saying the kids had been abused and, and all that. But as time went on, uh, it became clearer and clearer that, uh, you know, it was more of the children getting themselves together on a trip to Dubai and having uh, whatever they did and filming themselves. It wasn't the school who told them to go do that. You know, and maybe the school authorities too, too were not really aware of what these kids were doing. You know, so that's number one. Number two, people are confusing Dowen College, where uh, the late Sylvester Ramoni uh, was a student who died um, after he was taken away by his parents uh, from that school. You know, so but still, it's almost the same situation we can compare in terms of the immediate reaction of the public to things like this. I would advise, you know, I mean, where are all of those who were were crime blue murder? you know, who were asking for the government to shut down Dowen College. As the facts of the matter have emerged, you know, the coroner's inquest and the case going on, it seems that the public outcry, the public, um, you know, disdain for the school, 
um, and people calling for the head of the school, or the you know, that's the school to be shut down. It, it's it's gone down a little bit considerably, actually, as because people have begin, begun to see some facts. And I think it's it's uh, we can take lessons from this or these incidents to learn how to 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 wait, you know, learn how to allow authorities to do their investigations. And then if we see that something is going wrong or something is being hidden or something is someone is being protected because of their connections, then we can begin to talk. But for now, it's it's a bit early to start blaming the parents or blaming the school or blaming the it's it's a bit too early. So we, we, we will mourn the girl, we will commiserate with the family, and I think we just wait for the relevant authorities to um, carry out their investigations and let's see the outcome at the end of the day. Well, we move away from another one that's not also very pleasant. Uh, it's that uh, a 39-year-old Nigerian, Ola Niyi Nasiru, has been sentenced to over seven years in prison in the United States for his role in an international romance scam. Uh, we're talking about fraud here. He, so according to, you know, the report is stated that he opened 25 bank accounts to defraud elderly victims of 3.45, uh, I beg your pardon, $3.4 million. Uh, the United States prosecutor said that Ola Niyi, who is a permanent legal resident of the United States, you have to get that, it's not like he's an illegal. I mean, he's very permanent. His resident opened about 25 bank accounts in his own name, uh, a fake name, and a shell company through which nearly $3.4 million is fraudulently obtained uh, proceeds are transferred. Now, it was also disclosed that Ola Ni was uh, alongside nine orders. I mean, alongside nine orders were indicted in a Chicago base. Uh, sting operation, Operation Gold Pish, that identified cyber crimes that targeted all the people, and they were sentenced to 88 months in prison. Uh, after on an after which, of course, they was charged in uh, 2019 with wire fraud and operations. However, there's also a report that you know he probably would have escaped to Canada and what have you. And now you have all of this. Uh, this is according to the reports from Fox 32 Chicago uh, that was reported. Well, uh, I, I don't think that this is the first time this is happening, but Kofi, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> yeah, um, I think... Uh, yeah. Why are you, you smiling? Know, th there's not much to, to be said apart from the fact that, uh, you know, we would just say, here we go again. You know, here we go again because we, you know, we're, we're still trying to understand what's going on with Hush Puppy. You know, Hush Puppy, who was an Instagram sensation, and I mean, everyone was falling. Why are you smiling? Hey, you know, so, so this is another hush puppy. We're looking at 3.4 million US dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, and then the fact that this, this uh, man, or, or Moni, or Lani, was um, defrauding elderly people. You know, I don't know whether he was promising them love or whatever. You know, but, but it's, 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 it just goes to show um, that uh, in other parts of the world, you can't get away with these things. You know, I can, I, I mean, if or, or Lani, was was in Nigeria doing these things, okay? If he was in this country doing these things to these uh, foreign elderly, old people, people who probably uh, were losing their pension, their life saving, what they're going to rely on to survive. And you know, abroad, they, the family support system is not there. Nobody is ready to take care of you as an old person. You know, you went, you did your, you ha you've had your life, you've lived. Why should I? This is how the American young person thinks, American child, son, daughter. Why should I be taking care of you? I, I, you don't have to be a burden to me, okay? Uh, I left you home at 18. You kicked me out, say you're an adult, go and fend for yourself. I'm fending for myself. You to take care of yourself. That's what it place them in old people's homes. So you're expected to have you know, made your money and then ha had your life sorted out before you get to that age, okay? Some of them even buy their coffins before they die and they, they pay for their grave and all that while they're old, you know? So, so if, if you see that... Um, I mean, someone is defrauding elderly people. That's just so, so, so low. You know, that's just so low. But, but the thing about it is, will he have been arrested? Will he have been caught if he was in this country? Okay, or not? <laughs> number one, number two, if he had not been caught in America and he continued doing this, you know, this crime, all right, of uh, defrauding elderly victims, he made so much money, three $4 million. And he one, one day decides, you know, I want to come back to, to, to Nigeria and contest uh, an election to be the governor of um, of I don't know maybe Cross River State. Oh, 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 I can guarantee oh, you oh, nobody's no. gonna nobody, nobody's <laughs> gonna question him and say, oh, you were 
you were once, uh, you know, investigated or there's some questions about you, you come and contest as governor and then he'll win. All right, he'll win. And maybe after that, with his influence, he might say, okay, I want to be president. So, Kofi, I mean, first of all, uh, you actually didn't live up to my expectation because I thought you were going to say, what if he comes in? I was just that. So, so I, I was thinking that you were going to say, what if he comes in and then he says, oh, yeah, I was going to get married and what have you? And then No, yeah, the so ladies. we have to thank so the American that's authorities. Also, that's he, a, he could that's end up being the president if, if, if he was No, so, a, but I think you took country. it a bit higher than, you know, my expectation, and that's a plus, right? So I well, thought we you were going to put it on. So what do you expect? So I was thinking you were going to put it on the women and say, oh, it would just be that. But see, it, no, it's, no, no, it's no. unfortunate. You know, I, every time I say it's unfortunate, it's saddening. I, I really don't know what, uh, you know, how this goes, but it's a reflection of how people think. I don't even also think that it should just be limited to uh, a race because this crime actually goes across different parts of the world. Do you also know that Nigeria, there was a ranking some other time that's done between 2022 and 2023, however, an article that was published in terms of you know those who are involved in countries that you can you should be scared of and be aware of and nigeria didn't make number one i mean we didn't make number one for the first time because usually what was number one or number two and and if it's a positive light it should be a plus imagine you have a child and then they're in school they you know the confess top in their class that's a plus but nigeria is number seven on the it's list of today, i'm not trying to say i'm not trying to hold <laughs> a lot of pluses today <laughs> wait 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 i'm not yeah. trying to hold brief you know for crime and no, criminality no, no, talk, but countries with the highest number of scammers mm -hmm. uh when i actually look at that article pakistan was number one followed by brazil and south africa and then you have uh romania venezuela india Niger was number seven on that list. But yes, we have our case reported. And I'm not surprised because this is not the very first time we're hearing of a Nigerian being jailed in the United States for internet fraud or what they call that uh, thing again. They say is love, scam, something like that, where you begin to promise the other person love and affection, romance and what have you, and then you get them to send your money or defraud them of properties and what have you. Very, very, uh, it's, it's criminally minded. It's, it's not it. And for a climb where people would expect that there are a lot of opportunities, it's more a stable society, pretty organized, then uh, why would you be engaging in all of that? It's, it's low, just like Kofi had said. If you look at the people, just as, as a, a, a permanent public, resident, resident for that matter. Yes. It, you know, it, you know, do you understand? So, so, so now, now you see how these guys affect the fortunes of, God forbid, but you know, how, we, we have to ask, will this thing affect? Yes, yes. You know, the fortunes of honest Nigerians, you know, and not just Nigerians, mercy, even Ghanaians as well. You know, because you have Ghanaians also getting, you know, I mean, this is West Africa. They will just put everybody together, you know. And, and, and you have other African countries, like you said, who have their citizens going through this, you know. So, so how would this affect you? How will it affect me? Because every, every, yeah. every time you say you're Nigerian, you're, you're being looked and perceived as a criminal. People are just and running away. And that's a hasty generalization because mm. uh, you, this has been an experience, an encounter but, from a certain Nigerian, and yeah. all that we're having, it's not good. So we plead. Well, what can we do about so, this? So, I mean, question. it's just to yeah. say that that's not the way out. Like we always say, this morning on my way to work, as early as I was on my way to work, b before, I mean, five o'clock, around before six o'clock, then you have people begging. People who have their hands, their legs, their eyes, everything intact. You, you will have to give, you know. <laughs> you know, so but, they're begging you already and you begin yes. to ask yourself, but... You're hustling, Messi. No, yeah. how do you not hustle on me? <laughs> no, but... but, but I, I, they're hustling in the sense that, you yeah, know, they're asking you. Yeah. But I think that there are other... So you have all the things that you can engage yourself in. There are little things that can generate yes, revenue. And, and this is to, to tell our young people, you know, we, we, need, we, need to, we need to, there are ways to make money, like Mercy is saying. You know, fraud is not the way to go. You know, this money you're making is cursed, is what I believe. You go steal money from someone, it's cursed. It's cursed. It will end well with you. That's my belief, you know. Um, you may not be caught, but that money will not, you won't enjoy it, though. You won't enjoy it. And then we also call on, uh, parents to, to do their best to make sure that they discipline their children. You know, the good book says, the Bible says, train a child the way he should grow or she should grow. Mercy, <laughs> she starts wincing. And when he or she grows, um, they will not depart from it. Or maybe I just give that she. <laughs> you know, but um, 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 it's very important to also call on, on authorities, Americans, you British, that Nigerians are hardworking people. And if one, one person does something 
that is, is not right is a crime. doesn't mean all Nigerians or all Africans are like, are like that. So exactly. the citizens should not bear the brunt of the action of a few people. After all, you have fraudsters everywhere, even in America. The final one, uh, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency arrested a general overseer uh, of a church in Lagos over alleged drug trafficking. I don't know why you guys want to show his face on the screen, or should we, should we not touch? We should touch not the anointed. I don't, I don't know. But it, it, it's, um, it's, it's, his name is Femi Baba Femi. No, sorry. Femi Baba Femi is the NDLA spokesperson who announced this. Um, oh, there, you can see it. So that is the uh, general overseer. But since it's alleged drug trafficking, I'm worried when we see these mock shots. Remember the mock shot of that uh, Nollywood girl um, who was said to have been spraying Naira? Remember, Mercy. You know, these mock shots, what do you feel they are not guilty? But anyway, um, his name is a uh, high priest, uh, Nordu Kendrick. We, he said to have been apprehended alongside several others in an attempt to export 283 parcels of meta methamphetamine. Can you imagine? And 14.9 kilograms of uh, skunk. Uh, let's see, you know skunk? Concealed in kegs of palm oil to Dubai. Kegs of palm oil. Let's see, you know skunk? How am I supposed to know skunk? You're a journalist. You're meant to know these oh, things. Oh, well, so I, I hear skunk, but I, I don't know what skunk see, don't, is. Don't, 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 don't try it. Come on. Why are you... So what is it? You no, don't know skunk? Me. So, but I hear the name. I think it's... Or every other time we say skunk, but what does it look like? What is skunk? Okay, you don't know? Yes. Okay. Honestly, I don't. Okay. All right. All right. It's, what, it, it, it's a kind of marijuana. It's, it's weed. Oh. Mm, it's weed. So it's weed. Is, is weed. that a general yeah, name it's for weed? weed? But it's, it's, a, it's a higher grade. Of weed? Yes, yes. So it's yes. called skunk? Yes. So when people want to buy it, they go out to say they want skunk? I hope I got it right. I hope um, I got it right. I'm not but sure. I heard the Jamaicans talk about it. But what, what, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Because I mean, people are the fewer out there. Oh, Gio, Gio, look at that. Gio, you know? I mean, it's a very dicey one to talk about, really, to be very honest. But it's, it's very disgraceful. When I say it's disgraceful, it's that as those who are shepherds or those who are called into the fall or those who are, I mean, in the body of Christ uh, sh should, be, should know better, should, you know, follow the steps. Uh, this statement, usually, if you follow the Bible, now it sounds like I'm going to be a preacher, but let me just go through it. Oh, message, message, said, pre preach on, preach on, preach on. <laughs> Coffee. You remember uh, why you know the Christians were called Christians because they behaved like Christ. So they were like Christ-like. The behavior was like Christ. So that's why they were described like that. And if you if you look if you read the Bible, there's been several arguments about the Bible not being true and whatever it is, you know, whatever you. But in all of the documentation of the Bible, you find out that there was never anywhere that Jesus himself was doing wrong. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah. He healed the sick. You know, he was very generous. He fed people. These were the kind of things that he engaged in. And so um, I'm taking it back if that's, you know, Christ-like. But don't forget that a lot of people will come in the guise of saying that they are, you know, followers of Jesus. Absolutely. I mean, you're, and, but you know you're not. <laughs> I don't like what you're doing you to me. I'm doing? But we need to go now. No, no, Thank no, you no. So. You know what I'm doing? Coffee wants I'm... to get put off. <laughs> <laughs> We, all right, all of you are the this back is here. The you put of your the offering. You we put need your, to go away. Hey, guy, come take this, this cup so you can put off for mercy. Mercy. <laughs> this is our I offering. I have never seen anything like this. We have to go. That's oh, the old Naira, by the way, old Naira. <laughs> we have to go. Still the breakfast and plus, you have to go. We'll be right back.